Hi everyone, here's the Bookamist once again, and last year when I was in London, a YouTuber called Jacob Tanner recommended a book to me, uh, which he said I would love and that I should definitely read, and that book is Random Acts of Senseless Violence by Jack Womack, which I still haven't read, but I will someday, Jacob, if you're still out there. I will read the book, but uh, Locos by Philippe Alfau is also a book some of you guys recommended to me uh, ages ago in the comments to some of my videos, so you see I actually do read the books you people recommend occasionally, and it is a book that stirred my interest. I finally got around to reading it. I, was, I first got interested in this one because I understood and Mary McCarthy confirmed this in the afterword to my edition, that this is supposedly a book that in some ways preceded the type of self-conscious, playful, metafictional fiction uh, of the later 20th century. This is a book that took uh, ages to publish. Uh, after the author wrote it, it was published in 1936. No one cared about it and was reissued and gained a cult following in the 90s. And supposedly, as I mentioned, it is a first instance of that type of playful fiction that that you will find also in, for instance, Pale Fire by Nabokov, a novel I read and adored and loved last year, or in the fiction of people such as Borges, or Umberto Eco, or Italo Calvino, uh, all writers among my very favorite. And grasping the playful nature of the book is very easy, even just from the prologue, which explains what this book is about. Locos is very much a novel in which every chapter is a self-conclusive short story. I wouldn't even call it a novel in the first place, actually. Uh, these uh, different short stories, different chapters, tend to share some characters, but they do that in a rather quirky way. I'll discuss in a second. And the book plays extensively with that idea, that very common literary trope of literary characters as being independent of their author's control, as escaping uh, their author's imagination and taking taking on a life of themselves, which is a trope, incidentally, that Nabokov, I mentioned before, uh, he hated it. And there is a legendary, hilarious quote from his Art of Fiction interview with the Paris Review. Uh, I'll put a link in the description box. The, uh, uh, the interview is actually behind a paywall, but the section that includes the quote I'm talking about uh, is accessible to everyone. Uh, there's a link in the description box, check it out you must. The quirkiness I talked about regarding the characters comes mainly from the fact that the same characters in different stories play apparently contradictory roles. You may have a character who in a story is the maid of some Madrid nobleman, and by the way this book features some very interesting reflections and descriptions of Madrid and Toledo and other places in Spain. I visited Madrid and Toledo last year and loved them. Um, and this character, the same maid in a different story, is also a nun, but maybe also the sister of somebody else. And it's difficult to explain these contradictions, but yeah, very often they uh, defy logic, and it's technically impossible for these characters to play these different roles in different stories. And this, again, taps into, this, into that idea that these characters defy control and uh, escape control of the author and play a bit of what they want, and the book is filled with reflections on this theme, with the idea uh, that you have, for instance, a person who is supposedly a real person who falls in love with a literary character, uh, and then the opposite happens, and the book reflects on the fact that it's strange for a literary character to take a real person seriously, because usually it's the other way around. Usually it's real people who tend to take literary characters too seriously. Or the book maybe reflects on the story of a character who everyone ignores, because he is a very uninteresting person, and the book takes that as a chance to comment on the fact that modern literature Literature, as in literature from the early 20th century, is filled with uninteresting characters. You see what's going on. This is a book that constantly comments on fiction at the same time as it 
offers you a story of sorts. In that way, it is definitely proto-postmodern, I'd say. It's not just because of its metafictional games. Lots of fiction from across history plays all sorts of messed up metafictional games. It's the way those games are used. The fact that the book clearly wants you to reflect on how to, uh, on the way you read fiction and wants to make you think again at the process of world building and at the way you approach fiction differently from reality, whether there's a difference, whether there's not. That's uh, key stuff uh, in later 20th century fiction. Also very Calvinesque, as in uh, it reminded me a lot of the strangest, the quirkier side of the fiction of Italo Calvino, and occasionally of Borges too, which I mentioned, is the fact that many of the plots in these um, short stories show weird slash borderline supernatural occurrences, in general very quirky plot devices that make, that stretch the boundaries of very similitude, but make these stories very interesting. Say you have a story about a rather unlikely uh, blackout that strikes the city of Madrid for a certain period of time, or you have a person, a necrophile actually, that falls into a death-like state for a month, every year. That story, by the way, the necrophile is probably the strongest in the book, uh, has some very interesting, draws some very interesting parallels between religion and necrophilia, and all of these bizarre elements that are never fully explained and that I usually am a sucker for, I love this type of weird, bizarre fiction, uh, contribute to the general weirdness of the experience and to the displacement feeling you have throughout Locos. Now, uh, the main flaw of Locus, but I have to mention it, and I think it's a big one, is that compared to those other writers, compared to Borges, especially to Calvino or Eco, this book, I think, lacks heart. These characters are very interesting, and the games uh, the, the, the author plays with them are very interesting, but they always are possibly because of this very reason, because it plays with their textual nature so much, they always remain characters in the coldest sense of the term. You never get the impression that you are experiencing the actual life of, yeah, literary characters, um, but with recognizable moments that you can identify uh, in your own life and with relatable emotions and uh, with other things that make, uh, that make you connect with the reading and with the plot. For all that these stories, narrative devices are generally interesting and the literary games the book plays are generally interesting, you never get, I never got too involved with the lives of these characters and with the rhythm of the story. Uh, compare it to The Baron in the Trees by Italo Calvino, for instance, another quirky book, but you really come to feel for that main character and you really come to experience the big tragedy of his life. Uh, you never get to feel, I never got to feel once again, anything of the sort for Locos. Add to that that in spite of the book being rather short, it's uh, my edition is like 200 pages, um, it still is uh, some passages in it, some reflections feel a little bit redundant and it wasn't the, uh, it didn't flow as fast as it easily could have. I would like to say that this book can be great fun in the hands of the right type of reader, but I very much believe I am the right type of reader, or I should be, and I still wasn't the biggest fan of Locus. Uh, I do believe that if you are, have an interest in that type of quirky postmodern fiction, self-conscious that plays those types of literary games, if you have an interest in the writers I've mentioned, but also in people such as John Barth, Donald Barthelm, Angela Carter, and so on and so forth, you may want to check this book even just for uh, the reasons of literary history, because this was one of the first modern contemporary instances of those types of games played with that type of intention. But yeah, I would stop there. If you are a general reader just looking for a quirky book, you, you're, you're much better off with um, the bigger names, with Nabokov and uh, Calvino and that whole club. But let me know if you know Felipe Alfau, if you like Locos, if you knew of it, uh, if you had a different experience. I'm very curious to hear from people who know the novel and or the collection or whatever and had a great time with it. And thank you as always for watching guys. 
In a second you'll find links on the screen to a video I filmed about my very favorite Italo Calvino books and also to my review of The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco. Uh, and yeah, which is another book incidentally that plays extensive literary games and is so self-conscious about the whole concept of literature and fiction and books in general, but is also filled with so many unforgettable characters who lead interesting lives and is filled with uh, to put it very simply, so much heart, I think. Uh, about Echo, I'll be reviewing Foucault's Pendulum very soon, uh, probably in a week or two, and I'll see you in the next video, maybe that one. Bye guys!